Hello, my name is Dr. Art Raston Hat, and I'm here today to discuss our recent publication in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. We evaluated gold nanoshells performing localized photothermal ablation of prostate tumors. This was a multi-institutional experience in collaboration with Mount Sinai, Rice University, Michigan, UT Health, and Duke. There were two study sponsors. The primary sponsor was Nanospectra Biosciences, who developed the nanoshells in collaboration with Dr. West and Dr. Hallis. The research equipment used for the targeting and laser delivery was in vivo a Philips Healthcare company. I'll be reviewing the description of the device trial in the following talk, as well as the technology and the outcomes from our study. It's always interesting to hear where these studies start. Originally, this was a collaboration with Dr. Canfield and myself over dinner, asking if there was a way we could actually excite focal areas within the prostate. And this was a unique project that I was working on, collaborating with the NIH at the time on targeted biopsy via a transperineal approach using MRI imaging and fusion guidance. This was the original research study that I worked on with Philips Healthcare for the last eight years. Up to this point, the technology was not available to be able to focally target areas within the prostate, let alone deliver specific laser energy. So this fortuitous meeting allowed us to take this, this technology and nanomedicine and move it forward to where we are today. That's a little side note. It's just exciting to see where these things start. And I look forward to you completing the rest of this talk and hearing about what we've done so far. Patients were enrolled in this trial if they had low to intermediate risk prostate cancer, which means they could have had up to a Gleason 7 prostate cancer on biopsy. They must have localized MRI confirmed lesions with no disease in other areas. And this was done using MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsies. The PSA had to be less than 15 and their PSA density had to be normal. After the ablations, we obtained an MRI at two days. This was important for us because initially we, did determine, we needed to determine what the predicted versus the actual ablation zone was to optimize our laser dose, as well as when we redesigned the laser fibers are we actually obtaining a predictable ablation zone? Three months after the initial treatment, patients underwent a second MRI, a targeted biopsy, and we tracked their PSA trend. At one year, all patients underwent an MRI, a standard biopsy, as well as a targeted biopsy of any new lesions and the prior ablated area, and we were trending their PSA. The technology itself could appear simple, if you consider there's just gold silicon nanoshells, a laser device. But however, the key was integrated imaging and targeted biopsy techniques, as well as using that information for guidance to be able to exact a ultrafocal ablation of these prostate tumors. Here's a short video describing the technology. Oralase therapy is an investigational device for the precise thermal destruction of lesions in the prostate. The therapy is based on the unique properties of proprietary gold microparticles called aura shells. These inert, non-toxic particles are approximately 150 nanometers in diameter, or about 50 times smaller than a red blood cell. In the first stage of oralase therapy, a solution containing aura shells is infused into the bloodstream of the patient, allowing them time to collect in the lesion. Most cancerous lesions have poorly formed blood supplies leaving small holes in the blood vessels that the aura shells are small enough to pass through, leading to an accumulation of the particles in the target area. In the second part of the therapy, laser light is applied to the lesion previously located using MRI. Using an ultrasound probe and the images from the MRI to guide the physician, a trocar is placed into the lesion, distant from critical structures. A fiber optic catheter is inserted using the cannula, precisely where treatment is desired. When the laser is fired, the aura shell particles near the laser fiber absorb the laser light and become hot, raising the temperature of the lesion to a point where cell death occurs. After the procedure, the body reabsorbs the dead tissue and the lesion heals.
Taking a closer look at the mechanism, let's compare it to laser interstitial thermal therapy. Optical energy is deposited within tissue, creates heat, which creates the ablation of the tissue. The difference is, as described in the previous video, the aura shells actually absorb the energy and then create the heat for a tumor-specific ablation. This is accomplished by tuning the outside gold shell to optimize exogenous absorption of laser light and typically at 810 nanometers which is has a high tissue transparency of that laser energy so we use a subablative power so the heat from the laser catheter does not actually burn tissue it's the particles that create the damage and treat the lesions L taking a, a look at what's changing and why are we here discussing this this is the view from a typical targeted biopsy as you can see here in the upper screen is a merged image with a cartoon and a needle going through a tumor. Patients continually ask, if you can see it, doc, you biopsied it, you proved it was cancer. Why do you have to take out my whole prostate? Why can't you just treat the spot? And in this trial, we're looking at those types of patients and seeing what the outcomes are at three months and 12 months after treatment using nanomedicine, specifically photothermal therapy. As described in the video, in this illustration, you can see there are larger gaps between the endothelial cells and the tumors, allows the nanoshells to be deposited within the tumor and accumulate. On the second day, patients undergo focal ablation of the lesion. Using the prior biopsy data, we're able to take this 3D information and use it to plan treatment. As seen in the lower right hand corner of the screen, the urethra is in blue and the intended ablation zone is in green. Using the Euronav platform, we're able to take the information from the prior biopsy as well as the 3D mapping of the lesion and place laser trocars within the lesion. These trocars allow us to place the laser catheter in for excitation after all the trocars have been placed. This is an example. You can see a cartoon figure on the left demonstrating laser trocar placement and adequate coverage of the lesion. On the right, you see a stepper grid with the laser trocars all in place. That square white box at the top of the screen is the field generator used by the Euronav device to track uh, our, mo our movements in the three-dimensional space. After we've placed the laser catheters, we do sequential three-minute laser excitations to excite the nano shells to create thermal ablation. After the treatment, we're able to store the 3D data. As I mentioned before, day two, we obtain the MRI to see if the predicted volume of ablation is the same as the observed volume of ablation. As seen here on treatment day four, two days post-op, on the top screen you see the yellow circles highlighting the area of the tumor in this patient. Following this, the T2 weighted image on the first square on the left lower corner of the screen shows some edema, no clear signs of ablation. These are just non-specific changes. But looking at these last two views, the dynamic contrast enhanced MRI and the color map both demonstrate an area of complete ablation of the lesion. Again, at three months, we're now comparing the pretreatment to the post-treatment. You see contraction of the lesion, non-specific changes on the ADC map, and again, no focal enhancement of the lesion that was previously enhancing before. We then biopsy this area and determine if there's any viable tumor present within the lesion. We take between four and six samples of this area. The PSA trend post ablation is observed here. You can see approximately at three months, there's a 42% decrease in the PSA from their baseline. This is similar to most other focal therapy trials and an observed PSA decrease. If you ablate prostate tumors, the amount of PSA being secreted into the bloodstream is decreased. Hence, we see this change in PSA. Our three and 12 month post-ablation biopsy results are as follows. 
At three months, all patients underwent a repeat multiparametric MRI of the prostate and a targeted biopsy of the lesion. 62.5% of patients had a negative biopsy at that time. Taking into account the Delphi consensus for success in a focal therapy trial, that number actually increased to 75%. The median PSA reduction was 42%. At 12 months in our trial, all patients underwent restaging. This included PSA, physical exam, as well as a multiparametric MRI of the prostate and a standard biopsy, as well as a targeted biopsy of the prior ablated lesion, as well as if there's any new lesions present. In this case, 87.5% of patients had a negative biopsy of their lesions for cancer. It is important to understand that the early biopsy may not allow for enough time for an immunogenic tumor response to adequately allow cell death. Other investigators have recommended moving the biopsy to six months to allow for this event to occur. It is important to understand the context of why we put a biopsy at three months. At the time, we had really no experience using laser excitation with focal techniques. Therefore, it allowed us to assess laser dose, did we get adequate kill of the area, were there any complications, and then to adjust our technique as well as develop new technology along the way. This included redesigning our laser fiber to cut the time it takes to perform the pr procedure as well as modifying our approach, how trocars are placed. There were no grade three events or higher in this trial. Taking a look at lesion specific ablation, on the left side of the screen, you see a, a gel created with aura shells on one side and no aura shells on the other side. Then a laser fiber is placed in the middle and turned on. The excitation you can see only occurs on the sides with the aura shells and sides with no shell, there's no thermal damage or no heat being created that could kill tissue. Taking a closer look on the right, the prostate's been outlined in purple. The urethra has a blue arrow to that area. And the yellow arrow is showing a place where the trocar was placed during the treatment. The urethra was untouched, but the energy pushed laterally allowed for destruction of the tumor. It has been my pleasure today to report on our publication in PNAS. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to review the presentation. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to reach out to me via social media and or follow our YouTube channel for any new updates. Again, thank you. And as well as I'd like to thank our collaborators at Mount Sinai, Rice, Michigan, and UT Health.